He's an associate professor of computer science and the director of the interdisciplinary faculty cluster in visual narrative at your North Carolina State University. Please welcome Arnav Jala. Hello. So I challenged myself uh, when, when I first um, um, was asked to, to suggest, you know, people or, or to speak in, at this event. Um, so I do a little bit of work in VR and, and games. Is AI and games is my, is my specialty um, in terms of research. Uh, but I challenge myself to not do 3D and not do simulation, but still make it relevant. Right, so so we'll see how that'll that'll go. So um, I, uh, I I run a research lab at NC State in computer science. Uh, it is interdisciplinary. So I have colleagues uh, that are in history, in psychology, in art and design, and in computer engineering. Um, so we are like very diverse across multiple colleges. Um, and um, my lab's name is called Arnau, which this logo is off. Um, from my students, it means automated reasoning for narratives and visuals. Um, and what I work on uh, as a research area, which is more commonly people would recognize AI as a research area, artificial intelligence. What I work in is uh, what I call narrative intelligence. Um, the distinction is subtle, but I think a very important one. In artificial intelligence, we are trying to get very intelligent, uh, according to human standards, agents, algorithms, right? But our focus, a lot of our focus, I shouldn't say all of it, a lot of our focus has been on things like chess, right? Winning games of chess as a marker of intelligence or jeopardy. And this is all individual intelligence. It's like an individual who is the best at something. But our collective intelligence, our wisdom, the intelligence of our species, the reason we are successful as a species is not because of individuals. Individuals are a mere blip in the timeline of our, of our species, right? So no individual can have any significant impact within their timelines. Uh, it has to be a collective effort. And where is all that wisdom stored? It's in narratives, right? Uh, our fictional narratives also have real intelligence or wisdom stored in them. So that's sort of my philosophy in, t in terms of how I approach research. How does that connect to us? Well, um, we use narrative uh, intelligence or the, the lens of narrative intelligence to do sense making, reasoning about data that we see, about observations we make in this world. Um, and uh, we look at um, input modalities, text, video, um, audio, any kind of data. Um, and then we look at how uh, individuals operate on that and then how they then generate complex ideas, generalizations from the low level input that we get and how we then communicate with each other to agree on what then gets transmitted on um, as a sort of an efficient piece of wisdom, right? Um, so, uh, and this research is pretty broadly applicable to many specific domains. My uh, interest and my students, my lab's interest is in, is, is in the core science of it, is understanding how we do it. Um, but of course it has applications. But I'm a professor, so I will take you back to 1944. Um, and you look at these little uh, animation to the right. What do you think is going on? Someone? Yes. Yes, Tri triangles trying to get into the box, right? So um, in 1944, scientists Heider and Simmel showed, created a bunch of these animations with these triangles and circles, showed people these animations and asked them, what is the story here? And there were many, many different types of stories that people came up with. The big triangle is the little triangle's uh, parent and is trying to uh, make sure that the little triangle doesn't uh, hang out with the circle which looks different. <laughs> They're all classmates and the big triangle is a bully. Right, so racism, bullying. It's just triangles and circles absolutely randomly moving around. 
So we actually recreated this experiment and ran it crowdsourced on a large scale. But uh, I'm a computer scientist, right? So we had to do some, uh, something related to computer science. We actually created an animation generator that generated uh, more curated sets of higher level uh, uh, behaviors, right? Chasing, cornering, things like that. And then it sequenced behaviors to then ask the crowd what kind, what sequences of animations did people find interesting? So I won't go too, too, too far into this, but we have lots of stories that look very similar, but some of us are better storytellers. They, they, they tell a more compelling story, right? Um, why is this relevant? Well, now let's come back to our simulation aspect. In, in the, if I can use the term metaverse, which I don't understand, and I have a hard time using the term that I don't understand, but it's a hot thing, so let's just say it. Um, so when you have characters, um, when you are in a virtual world that we are increasingly going into, where there are lots of stories, there are also virtual characters that we interact. And uh, unlike, uh, unlike an animation, which is entirely hand controlled, these characters actually need to be interactive. You go speak with them, right? You, you expect a response. You go ask them the same question again, and you expect a response, but maybe slightly more nuanced response, slightly different response. Uh, maybe, maybe the character is irritated because you are asking the same question multiple times. You know, game characters don't do that. NPCs, non-player characters in games don't do that. And so, um, so how do we simulate in this 3D virtual world that looks very real, but has a lot of artificial characters? That's how I'm gonna connect 3D and simulation with work on narrative that we do. So one thing that I want to mention here is this distinction between realism and believability. When we say simulation, what we mean is how real can we get the simulation to be, that's one of the goals, right? Like a physical simulation um, or a chemical simulation and so on, right? How real can it be? Simulating people is hard. People are complex, people are contextual. We don't understand people. So how do you simulate people? We cannot simulate people by thinking of realism. We simulate people by thinking of believability. Can you create a bunch of people that have interesting stories that are in a place where you can interact with them and come up with believable interactions. Um, and, and so this kind of takes us back to artificial intelligence. Uh, in cognitive science and psychology, um, believability uh, and, and interestingness of stories has been researched for a long time. And so this arrow right here um, are theories from cognitive science and psychology over many decades where it says, well, background knowledge makes people interesting, right? If they have good backstories and so on. Um, if, they can, if they can show how they form their beliefs and how they change their beliefs, uh, then that makes it interesting um, and more believable. Um, there's some sort of incongruity that you can see. People are not perfect. Right? And so these virtual people that we are simulating may not be perfect. And so if they show some incongruity, then that might actually be good, right? Um, reconceptualization is that we are able to reconceptualize uh, what is being talked about um, and so on, right? And then the last one is sort of predictive inference where they can actually predict and show that they have uh, predictive inference capabilities. Uh, what's kind of interesting is that down here, in this sort of, now the vertical part of our T, um, if we look at the agents that we interact with a lot, you know, characters like Siri and Alexa and, and so on, um, a lot of the focus on language processing in terms of AI has been on trying to perfect language. It's going back to our individual skills, right? Um, which is to say there's a lot of work, just like millions of dollars of NSF funding that goes to things like correct spelling generation, you know, all the things that you do with Grammarly now, um, the decades of research. Um, but really, none of this is relevant in terms of believability as, as, as research shows. Um, and so what I want to kind of make a point here is that to simulate people, um, 
we need to look at narrative intelligence uh, and believability rather than artificial intelligence and, and, and skill modeling. Um, um, an amazing graduate student, Sasha Azad, and uh, one of my collaborators, uh, uh, Professor Martins, um, have started developing uh, uh, what we call a little, the little computer people taxonomy, where we are systematically looking at all of the features of believability uh, in simulating people that we might need and, and starting to do experiments with them. Uh, and we have a, a couple of examples of these that are sort of little experiences that are out there. Uh, one of my former students, Chris Miller, uh, developed this uh, algorithm called Stories of the Town, uh, which is an algorithm that generates an entire village, an entire town full of people, thousands of people. You can select a person and you can talk to them and they give you a backstory of why they are at that position in town, like I'm in front of a doctor's office, because and there's a whole backstory. And they can keep telling you their backstory all the way back to their childhoods and so on. And this is entirely procedurally generated. Um, so, um, and so that includes a lot of simulation planning uh, and, and uh, other techniques. Um, we've also kind of in the game side, one of my collaborators in, in Portugal, a few years ago, we released a mod for the game called Skyrim, um, which allowed people to create social states for characters that are in towns in Skyrim, which is this big open world game. Um, and they actually um, uh, react to interactions that you had with their friends in the village. And so if you, if you don't act uh, nice to someone, then later it, uh, someone else is not gonna like that and you won't get the information you need to finish your quest. And then you'll have to figure out how to navigate around that to get them to like you. And we call it prom week meets Skyrim because um, a lot of the things that come into play like while trying to get navigate your social physics to get a prom date um, is, is kind of what is going on in that particular example here. So that's my talk and happy to take questions. All right, time to get your questions about human interactions being modeled in the 3D space. Raise your hand and I will bring the mic to you. If you have questions, we've got one in the far back here. All right, here's your question. Who's your favorite theme park character in Westworld? <laughs> that, that's a tough question. I'm not gonna answer that, <gasps> not on TV. Really, you're just gonna leave us all hanging? I will leave you hanging. Okay, talk, fair enough. Talk to me after. I will definitely mix. see you after. It's more intrigue than I've seen at any show so far. All right, other questions. We've got one right here you front and center. Ask questions for me. This may or may not be germane, but I'm interested if you have an opinion on what the hell happened to Second Life. Was it oh. too early? Okay, yeah, so that, that one I will answer. I won't, I won't deflect it because it's... Um, Second Life, interestingly, is, is still... To, to some degree around uh, Linden Labs. Uh, and in fact, um, at one point, if you look at this example down here, um, so for those of you second, how many of you don't know of Second Life? Is there, people are too young here. Like, <laughs> so Second Life was basically a, a virtual world um, that uh, was it's kind of like a, 3D game version of Zoom. It's like an MMO, but for more like um, classes, teachers, social gatherings, things like that. And there were islands, and I think IBM had a few islands there, and people at IBM used to, used to work there. Uh, but this was like many years ago. Interestingly, Second Life did get at some point interested in, um, in this character simulation aspect. And this, this bottom right one, this example here, is uh, from an iPad app called Versu, V-E-R-S-U. And um, this was uh, a simulation, so a, a, a writer and an AI person developed this. Um, and what they were doing was they took um, old English, sort of Victorian English novels, and they simulated character interactions 
through characters in that. And so you can actually look at stories that were generated by getting a collection of these. And, and there, their emphasis was on uh, social practices that were consistent with that time period. And so that's what they were simulating in that. So I highly recommend, if you're interested, to look at Versu. And also, Emily Short is the writer, and she has a, a, a fantastic blog. Uh, might be worth checking. Our last question coming here from your left. Hello there. I would like to ask you uh, about the Skyrim mod. It looks really cool. Where can I get it? So it's called Social NPCs. And it's available on Steam and also on Nexus mods. So you should be able to get it. Yeah. Leave a review if you like it. All right. Give it up for Arnav Jala. You.